Welcome to Brown Bird News. I'm Tatiana Thompson. The state of North America's birds report was released last week and things aren't looking so good. An estimated 1 billion birds have disappeared since 1970 and about one third of all bird species in North America are under serious threats from habitat loss and climate change. Visit our website to see more and learn how you can help. Here's a little nature nook in the middle of our town and a lot of people come here to feed ducks. I actually saw um, some parents and kids feeding ducks the other day. They were just throwing white bread and crackers into the river and I thought, not a very good idea because that just fills up their stomachs and gives them absolutely no nutrition. So a lot of them actually starve to death. So I had an idea of bringing my son and showing him what we can feed to waterfowl and ducks in particular. We've been waiting for ducks for about an hour. They haven't showed up yet. So let me just show you what you can have. Here's my stash. Uh, you can start with the frozen peas and corn. No need to cook them, just like that thawed. There you go, Kieran, can you hold this for me? Thank you. Then vegetable trimmings. Here I had some cucumber, so I just chopped it up into pieces. There we go, thank you. Any kind of grains you have kicking around in your kitchen. I have rice, barley and quinoa that I just mixed up. No need to cook again. There we go, thank you. Lettuce, ducks love their greens, so just chop it up, tear it apart and bring lots of that. There you go, thank you, Kieran. And then any kind of bird seed mix you have. Here I have black oil, sunflower seeds, safflower seeds, and some peanuts. That we'll give them too. And finally, something sweet for dessert, grapes. Just make sure you kind of quarter or half them depending on the size of a grape. And if you have mealworms, you can feed them mealworms as well. So that's it, give them the good stuff. Hi David, this week's question is something that I think a lot of us ask ourselves about migratory birds. So here's what Jeff Jones from Tennessee writes. Every spring for the past at least four years, I've had two or three rose-breasted grosbeaks. They come for a week or so and then they're gone. My question is, am I insane? Could these be the same ones every year or do I just have a couple on their way who happen to stop off? Hi Jeff. Wow, aren't you the lucky guy to be hosting not one, but as many as three migrating rose-breasted grosbeaks in the last four years, even if only for a week's time. The males with their black and white plumage and that striking blood-red teardrop in their breast makes them one of the prettiest songbirds in North America, and their flute-like song is beautiful to hear too. As for their identity, unless the birds are sporting aluminum leg bands for identification, it's impossible to say they're the same birds. Small songbirds like grosbeaks only have an average lifespan of two or three years at best, although the odd individual can celebrate their 12th birthday. It's also true to say, though, that if one of them does indeed like a particular location for migration and or wintering, they could return to that same spot year after year. There could be something they like about your place, such as lots of preferred food like seeds and insects, and good cover against weather and predators. Let's hope they continue to grace your backyard in the years to come. If you have questions for Dr. Bird, write to him at askdrbird at brombirdcare.com. Have you ever wondered why birds sing so much so early in the morning? I know recently here between cardinals, finches and viris, we've been waking up at 5 a.m. almost every day. There are basically three reasons why birds prefer to sing this early in the morning. One, at that time of the day, temperatures are still quite low and birds are just a bit chilled. Singing is their sort of a morning workout routine, wakes them up and gets the blood flowing. Two, the bugs are still asleep early in the morning, so birds don't really have to worry about looking for food and filling their tummies. They can concentrate 100% on their songs. Later during the day, they'll be busy foraging for food when all the bugs are out. And three, the early bird catches the worm. Well, in this case, it's actually catching a mate. The earlier you start declaring your territory and the earlier you start attracting a mate, the more successful you will be. There is something 
in our DNA called a telomere. It looks like a little cap at the end of a shoelace, and it actually protects our DNA. Our lifestyle, unhealthy food, too much stress wear out this little cap, and this controls how fast we age. This, by the way, is the same in birds. And recently, scientists discovered that there is something else that might affect the way birds age inbreeding. There are these warblers called Seychelles warblers. They live on one of the Seychelles islands and they are totally isolated from all the other warblers. Scientists studied this particular group of birds for 14 years and discovered that these birds were forced to inbreed and that was putting too much stress on their telomeres, making these birds age faster and die earlier. So here's the recipe to live long, eat well, move, don't stress out and try to date strangers. The ancient murrelet is the only water bird that raises its young entirely at sea. They are quite widespread in the Pacific, but they are considered endangered in Canada. Murchison and Faraday Islands were very popular as breeding grounds for Asian murrelets and black oyster catchers. But for the longest time, the two islands were really infested with rats that were destroying birds' nests and were eating their eggs. In 2013, a joint effort between Parks Canada and the Haida Nation successfully cleaned all the rats off the island. And as of this year, ancient murrelets and black oyster catches are returning to the two islands because the ecosystem has reverted to its original state. If you like hummingbirds and if you want to see more than just ruby throats, then Sedona, Arizona is the place to be at the end of July. Boasting more species of hummingbirds than Texas, this festival offers garden tours, banding demonstrations, and visits to two different habitats. Click on the link in the video to see how beautiful Sedona is. We received some beautiful pictures this week, so we decided to give away the deluxe model, the Squirrel Buster Plus. Let's check out the top five. And so this feeder is going to Gary Reinhardt, who lives in Maryland. Congratulations, Gary. We will be adding something new to Winner's Circle next episode, so stay tuned. One more thing for today, the results of the Global Big Day are in, and to date, it's the most successful year. 6,300 bird species out of 10,000 were submitted. My checklist is there too. Well, I wish you a wonderful week, and I will see you next Tuesday.